All right, so fine. Let's summarize this shit. Okay, we got a guy like me. I'm not a doctor, imagine. And I'm sitting there. I hear Corona, 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 Facebook, YouTube. I'm contributing to that. Um, TV, the news media. I'm, I'm freaking out, man. Right? I'm freaking out. It's, it's, it's allergy season out there. I'm freaking out. I got a sore throat now. Sequentially lead me through this. I have a sore throat. I call Dr. Hayes. Dr. Hayes, am I dying? Do I have the COVID? What do I do? Yeah, that's a call we get a lot, actually. So, hey. Hey. Well, good evening, Dr. Hayes. Good evening, Dr. Valeri. Uh, this is my uh, very close friend, unfortunately, uh, who is also an infectious disease doctor, who has Thank given you. me some time to interview him. Hi, all of Dr. Kartik Valeri's friends. I've seen, I've seen your show. I've seen some of the stuff you've put out. It's really good stuff. I'm honored to be here. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Okay, so let's get started. Okay. I think I have COVID. What do I do? I think I have COVID. What do I do? Okay, first thing, don't panic. Well, the biggest things we've seen in folks are fever, cough, or shortness of breath, issues with breathing. Some people have actually presented with diarrhea before developing these other symptoms. Some people may have some sore throat, headache, diffuse pain and aches in their body, maybe something that feels kind of similar to the flu. But the two major things we've seen are fever and cough. Some people can have very subtle symptoms like a mild cold, especially in the youth, and it may stay that way. Some people will have these symptoms for about a week and then start to get significantly worse, which is something to take into account. I've been heading the COVID service at the Hospital for Infectious Diseases right now, and uh, there's a couple of patients where they had at least four or five days of diarrhea before the other symptoms developed. Basically starts like a cold or diarrhea. That's the weird part. Diarrhea, is that like a newer thing compared to what China had? No, we saw that a little bit in China. I think it's just something we've been picking up more that we've been seeing it happening. We're, we're starting to like gather that data to present it. But some people, it's diarrhea. I think everyone knows this. They like pounded this on the media. Everyone's aware, is yeah. educated, right? Yes. What symptom would you be freaked out about? What would make Dr. Edwin Hayes go to the hospital saying, shit, I have COVID? I think the thing that would make me worried and think I need to be in the hospital would be if I was having so much trouble struggling breathing that I couldn't even function. So you can't walk across the room the way you used to. If you use oxygen, you're having to use a lot more oxygen than you used to. You're coughing, wheezing. You can't complete sentences without stopping to take a breath. Those would be things that would make me concerned that your oxygen level was too low, that you were having trouble breathing, and potentially you might need some extra help from somebody at the hospital. Other than that, a lot of the symptoms people have, they would actually stay home. People who aren't considered sick enough to need help from something in the hospital like oxygen or IV fluids, it's actually recommended that they stay home. Dude, how am I going to know if I'm sick enough or not? Like... I understand to the point I sort of get short of breath and all this stuff. Yep. It's telling me, oh my God, you know, something's going wrong. But what if I have something, like, what if I have asthma? What if I have COPD? What if I have heart failure? So similarly, if you have these conditions and you start having issues that are out of the norm for you, your breathing is giving you lots of issues, you're struggling to do your daily tasks in life, those could be major concerns. And really this is something you want to catch before it gets worse. So the first thing you should do it's a very case-by-case -case basis, is talk to your healthcare professional. Your primary care doctor, whoever you typically see, should be aware of the symptoms that you're having and probably ask you some more questions based on their knowledge of the medications you take, the kinds of medical issues you have, to see if it's something that's getting worse or something that may warrant going to the hospital. Okay. So, all right, let me tell you something. Yesterday, I had uh, one of my little cousins call me, Florida cousin. Uh, yeah. I was at the beach 12 days ago, you know, college kid, whatever. The point is this, she developed symptoms and it sort of scared me because she had persistent high fevers, 101, 102, I mean, this is enough for 48 hours now. 
and I refuse yep. to prescribe her antibiotics because I'm like, this is viral. And then, you know, if you're getting short of breath, go to the hospital. But then I was, getting, as a human being, I was getting concerned, like, holy crap, there's a lot of people in her house, there's sisters, and her mother and father, like, should she go to the hospital? So I asked her to call the local hospital, and they're like, no, you're not at risk. Why? Why did they say that? You're not at risk from what? COVID? COVID. Yeah. Okay. They said, oh, no, you don't need to come in yet, even though you have all these symptoms, except no shortness of breath, severe, severe sore throat. I'll tell you the end of the story. Pretty interesting. Okay. Now. What? I want it. What's the end of the story? So the end of the story is basically, I think the importance of a physical examination and not an over the phone consultation, right? Yeah. So I told her to take a picture of her oral cavity and you can yeah. see blown up tonsils with X dates on them. So uh, I, tonsils. I prescribed her augmented. No nailed people. it. Things got better. Nailed it. Thank God, man. It, like, it's freaky, right? It's, it's very scary, and I think that it's getting harder. We used to have typical criteria that we would use, including exposures or coming from a high incidence area, but we're getting to the point where everywhere is a high incidence area. So using that kind of exposure history is becoming less and less helpful to guide who has it or who doesn't. Ideally, we would be doing testing on everyone, but unfortunately, we've had significant bottlenecking with the tests. It's been a slow process to get the test done. It's been a slow process to get the tests back. There are centers around the country and the health department and the primary care providers you have should be able to direct you to those centers where you can get outpatient testing and you can actually have the um, health department help direct what you would do at home if you're living with other people. Probably that might be one of the most important things to consider is if you do have this disease process, the other people you're living with could get it and you should be considering the fact that you, you might need to wear a mask. Wearing a mask is probably one of the best things you can do to protect other people if you're actively sick. There we go. Washing your hands, isolating yourself, being in a separate room as much as possible. And then the CDC actually has guidelines for at what point you can raise those isolation, um, that, that those isolation plants at home. Dr. Hayes, I don't believe in the CDC. What do you say to that? How do you deal with that? Well, you could listen to your own local health department if you'd prefer. I don't believe in government. Oh, I you don't believe even... in the government, what they're telling me. You don't trust the government. I do. It's true because there's people with genuine fears and, yes. misinformation, and misinformation out there, which it mm -hmm. sort of breaks my heart, man. How do, you, yeah. how do you handle it? Yeah, yeah. It's very difficult. I think you have to do what you can on a personal level with people to just develop that kind of relationship to show them that you care about what's happening and that you're actually trying to help them solve a problem. This is such an imminent problem for everyone. It touches so many different kinds of people that it's really important more now than ever that we work together with people, even if they don't necessarily share the same views or belief systems and just focus on keeping people healthy. And some people aren't gonna believe what the government's going to say, but they might be a little more inclined to believe what their personal health care provider says. And I think it's important that they what reach out to the health care provider, their doctor. Huh? Your doc, fine. Your yeah. doctor. Fancy. Your doctor. Talk to your physician. Talk to your nurse practitioner. The person who gives you medicines. Talk to them. That's yes. a pharmacist. Talk to your pharmacist. You could talk to them, okay. and they'll probably tell you to talk to your doctor. 